In the book of Luke, we find two questions asked of the angel Gabriel that resulted in two different responses. The first question is asked by Zechariah, the second is asked by Mary. Both questions seem simple and uneventful, but their inference and results were quite different. Now, Zechariah is told that he will be a father in his old age. He and his wife had no children, and they were past the normal expected age to begin a family. Gabriel comes to him and says that not only will they have a child, but that child is going to pave the way for something amazing in this world. Sounds simple enough, right? But then Gabriel goes to visit Mary and shares some pretty amazing news. Much like the news given to Zechariah, his news to Mary involves the miraculous birth of a child. Now, unlike Zechariah and his wife, Mary was not too old. Her issue was a matter of physical impossibility. Many of us operate on the premise that we should never question God. Many of us think questioning God is somehow an insult or a display of a lack of faith. So many of us operate on the premise that we never question, only trust. But how does God really feel about questions? Does he really see questions as an affront to who and what he is? In the accounts written by Luke, Mary and Zechariah find themselves in somewhat similar situations, but they respond in two totally different ways. They both respond with questions, but it's the shape of the question asked that made all the difference. When Zechariah is told that he would become a father in his advanced age, his question is one of doubt. He basically tells Gabriel that he needs proof. His words, how can I know this is true, infers the need for credibility or legitimacy. It wasn't good enough for him to be told this. He wanted affirmative proof. Mary, of course, asks her own question. Her question, however, comes from a different place. Her question is not made in order to seek proof. Her question was more logistically focused. Her question did not ask for proof, but rather sought to figure out the how. When she asked, how will this be? She was accepting what was being said to her, but trying to explore how it would come to pass. It was as if she was asking, what must I do instead of prove it? The difference in the question and how it is asked makes all the difference. As with many accounts given to us in God's word, there is something to be taken from these two questions from which we can glean formational content for our own lives. You see, the Bible is not a book of historical content. It is given to us to explore so that we may better understand God's workings in our lives today. What kind of questions do you have this Christmas? If you were Zechariah or Mary, would your first question be a matter of seeking proof? Or would your question be a matter of figuring out what you must do to see God's will be done? Something to pray about, don't you think? Exploring the elements of faith can be a lifelong pursuit. Knowing what questions to ask can be the hard part. If you like what you saw here in this video, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube or like and follow on my Facebook page. My goal is to have a new video uploaded every week. More importantly, I'd love to hear from you. Share your thoughts with me about what the video means to you, or if you have a faith question or video suggestion, send me a message about it. I'm not going to tell you that I have all the answers, but I seriously enjoy the exploration process, and especially with others. In addition to YouTube and Facebook, you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram, or my written blog on Tumblr by searching at Rev Chris Hall. Please feel free to share this video if you think someone else could benefit from it, and thanks for watching.